talking about college football, we'll stay on that for just a little bit. Dennis Dodd. You know, we love Dennis Dodd, CBS Sports, all that good stuff. He's been covering this sport for years and years. Every year at CBS Sports, he puts out his annual hot list. Oh, by the way, McKinnon jumped in on YouTube, said, Howdy, gents. If anybody else would like to dive in on the comments, feel free to do so. It's going to populate right there in your bottom left-hand corner of your screen, no matter what platform you talk from, whether it's Periscope, Twitch, Facebook, YouTube, etc. So go ahead and dive in if you would like to. Um so he released his his hot seat standings, right? And in the year after COVID, it's kind of strange to figure out what the pulse is, what the temperature is like for some of these jobs, right? And you and I have talked about a couple of them back and forth, trying to figure out, okay, what um, you know, what who who really is on a hot seat right now? He has three of them that are in win now or be fired mode, and. And I don't know that I necessarily agree with two of his three. So I'll go ahead and start with those, okay? Okay. The first one is Justin Fuente. Now, I agree 100%. Virginia Tech, I I, I believe he has to win this year. Like, I, I think he's gotten himself to that point. Um, Jamal Cooper jumps in and said, I just found you guys, and this is my new favorite show. That's what I'm talking Thank about. Thank you, man. The it's internet's nice. not always such a hateful-ass <laughs> place. Thanks, Jamal. <laughs> You got that right. Hey, subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss all the other stuff, my friend. Yeah, um, man. So, I, I, Justin Fuente, yes. You you tend to agree? Yeah, I know. As much as we love Fuente, and we are Fuente dudes, it is it is time. Yes. You better win something this year. You you keep losing to to whatever the FCS schools are Old that Dominion you keep playing, and, yeah. then, then you got a problem, all right? Yes. You are correct about that. Uh, Scott Frost at Nebraska and Randy Edsel at UConn. I don't know that I agree with these. Uh, okay. Reason being, right, Frost, whoa, whoa. like, okay, wait, go wait, ahead. Wait, wait. You don't agree that it's, you don't. I don't think personally? they have to win this season. Okay. But do you think they should have to win this season? I And you just think that the administration there doesn't care about football enough or whatever the logic is behind the administration, they're not going to do it. Or is it both? I think it's a combination. I okay. think I think it's a combination. I think I think Frost, like yeah, you you need to start showing some signs of improvement here. But I, we're not we're not on the final uh, rung of of his ladder yet. I, I, I also want I also want explanations of what is win now. If your Scott Frost is uh, eight and four a uh, win now season, is it seven and five a win now season? Or are those both fireable? I mean, are we talking ten and two or bust? No, no, no. He's talking bowl game or bust. Like that's oh, what dang. God says. Six and six. Yeah, six and six. That's the level of win now or bust. Uh, yeah, you got to show some kind of a, a some kind of improvement this season. I think. <laughs> Boy, and that is a listen. That's it's a it's a it's a wonder neither one of these schools are SEC schools. Okay, <laughs> because because Auburn just fired the shit out of a guy <laughs> because because he didn't win ten games two years in a row back to back. All right, LSU fired the shit out of the winningest coach at LSU. Because he didn't win 10 games two years back-to-back. Nine wins will get your ass canned, okay? Yes. And you're talking six and six will save a job? It's it's pretty... At big boy schools. This is not six and six at Rucker or Maryland. This is six and six at Nebraska and and uh, and and Virginia Tech. I mean, God, when we were in high school, Vitek was the shit. They were on the top of the football heat. They didn't win championships, but they were always in that conversation as the ACC team. Yes. Yes. Uh, and now six and six is a job saver? Are you kidding me? And so Jamal said you guys are missing one. Uh, he said Clay Helton, but uh, we're, we're going to get to that. We're going to get well, to yeah, that. Yeah, this, is, this is what this guy, Dennis Dodd, his list, and we're just going through his list. So, I don't think Clay Helton's a five, right? No, he's not a five. Um, I didn't see that. Randy Edsel at, at a five. This is a program that that didn't play last year, and <laughs> for whatever reason, they don't um, care about football. Yeah, they don't care about football. So why would they fire Randy Edsel? Like, so this is one where I was curious. I'm, I'm, I'm splitting hairs, but I'm asking the – is this you think he's wrong about the administration or you think he's wrong because they shouldn't be on the list? Because this is one where I 100% think he should be a five. And yeah, I, I don't just, think he will be a five because I don't think he's on the hot seat. That's that's it. But I he think, should be on the hot seat. I think because that school doesn't give a damn, 
uh, yeah. that he's that he's not on the hot seat. Uh, maybe he that. should, but I also wonder if you're not getting any kind of support from the university for your program. What what exactly are the expectations? So what is a hot seat if nobody cares, right? Well, that's that's the ultimate question, which is why I was asking how many wins we got to get to 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 not be on said hot seat. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Hey, by the way, Patrick, he's got my boy Orgeron as a four. Yes. I'm telling you, if Orgeron goes six and six, it, it, it's going to be pretty toasty. Yes, uh, Patrick, that's Houston a different situation. Jumped in on YouTube. He said, "Wouldn't the schools just create a governing body to legitimize their theft in place of the NCAA?" Uh, yeah, they're going to create their own thing. Oh, but. somebody's going to turn into the son of a bitch and start stealing from folks. That's <laughs> that's what we do in this country. We we demonize one group of people for being so horrible at their job, and then another group of people rise up, take power, take control, and they start doing the same shit the other people are doing because the other people are making a lot of money doing it. Yes. Yes, 100%. Like, that will continue on. That will just continue on forever and ever. So... <laughs> Um, the other names on this list, the the fours here, there are six of them. Herm Edwards, and we all know about that one. That's right? a different situation. That's, different. That's not a win-now situation. That's where I think this is wrong. Ed Orgeron, now we yeah. just talked about that. Uh, yeah, if he goes six and six, that's a problem. But, uh, yeah. you know, anything above that, if he, if he goes eight and four, I think he's going to be fine. Uh, so no, I can, Ed, I can see. Ed is 100% not on the hot seat. There, are, We've talked about this multiple times on the show. I don't mean to keep cutting you off. I apologize No, you're that. good. You're good. Um, yeah, I'm a little hyper right now. I don't know why either. I haven't eaten or drank anything in a long time. Um, I, I I think the media really likes the idea of Ed Orgeron being on the hot seat because he's an interesting character. Yes. And it gives when, him when LSU about. was bad last year, they had nothing to talk about, Ed, but he's a good guy to talk about. He's an interesting person to bring up and to write about. And so we have to write these negative stories because – he's not good enough right now to write about the good stories, but those negative stories I fully believe are complete farce. I just, I, I, I know too many people down in Baton Rouge, too many people connected to this program and, and too many people that are just general fans of the team and zero of them are upset with him. They, we want to win, but, but he's not getting fired guys. Not, 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 not after this year, not unless he gets in trouble. Doing I mean, something yeah, wrong. if it's if it's part of the stuff that's going on, uh, yeah, if we have a less mild situation come yeah. out, that's that's I'm not speaking to that though. Yeah, we're talking just about winning. wins and losses, hot seat, and and there's he's just not getting fired. That's just not how this is going to go down. That's a media thing. They're just trying to write about him because he's an interesting guy to write about. Yes, uh, two of these names. So we'll we'll do these two, and then we'll talk about the the two big ones. Uh, okay. Walt Bell, number four. He's at UMass. Uh, again, how much of this is hot seat? How how hot is the seat at UMass? Like, do they care about football? Probably not. I, you know, he's only been there for two years, and last year was a COVID year. So I, I don't think it's that hot. And then Dana DeMell at UTEP. Um, you know, again, it's UTEP. Like, he won three games last year. It's the first time that they've won three games there in what feels like a decade. Like, I was just about to say, that's like the best season they've had in a long time. Yes. Now, granted... One win was over Louisiana Monroe, and two were over FCS teams. But like, what are we doing? You know, it, I, I'm curious. Like, if if he if he doesn't do something to get like at three to five wins this year, yeah, maybe he's in a little bit of trouble because you got to figure out something if he's not the guy. But I don't think it's that hot there. I don't think it's crazy. Um, the two big names here are Clay Helton at USC. He's a four. He is. I mean, he's been on the hot seat for years now I mean we're talking like three four years but he had, had I felt like he had kind of worked his way off of that when he hired Graham Harrell as the offensive coordinator it, USC will continue to win eight nine games a year ten games a year whatever it is they will never be in national title contention and until that program gets to a point where they want to get serious I think he's going to continue to be there like that's all it is so I, I don't know that he's really on the hot seat um and then the other one is Jim Harbaugh. Uh, Harbaugh, like, landed a... So he signed an extension, and it was a drop-down in pay. Yep. And I don't know... that it, it might make it easier to fire him, but his buyout is still, you know, pretty high up there. Why would you fire him a year after he signs an extension? 
Uh, unless they go, you know, if he ends up three and nine or four and eight or something like that, then yeah, it, it's seven and five. Like you're working through a rebuilding year, you're trying to figure some stuff out. You got a whole new batch of recruits coming in. I don't see him going anywhere. I don't see this becoming a hot seat situation. I this this feels like it should be a three, if nothing else. Yeah, like you kind of feel the same. Yeah. I, um. So I want to get back to to uh, the UMass situation. Dan Wetzel has this opinion. Who Dan Wetzel's Yahoo Sports writer, one of our favorite sports writers. He's, he is my favorite sports writer. Um, love the guy, and he graduated of UMass. He's an alum, uh, and he's he's got a joking opinion. And I've been thinking about it more and more since I've heard him talking about this for the last several months, jokingly. UConn and UMass should merge their two programs into one football program, send the money together and create a New England United college football team. I'd be totally fine um, with that. <laughs> and and so I looked up what I was doing. I was looking up how far apart the schools are. They're, they're about an hour and a half away from one another. So you got a, you got a little bit of a drive for one school or the other, um, unless you want to send both of them forty five minutes and buy a facility somewhere in the middle of you know Connecticut or Massachusetts. Um, I I know that sounds ridiculous. I really like that idea, and I wonder is there any conceivable way the administrations of those two places could say it's better to be in D one football. It's better to be in FBS and, and come together and split that money than it is for both of those programs to drop down and make what they can make at the lower level. Cause I think even at the lower level, they're getting their ass kicked and they're making no money. It probably right. It's now costing the money unless now UMass is great about going and taking that paycheck. UConn doesn't do that very often, but UMass, they, they going to go out and they're getting paid two, three million, oh, not three million, so about a million and a half, two million dollars, two to three times a year to take an ass whooping from somebody. Yes. I mean, they're, they're both independents. Uh, yeah. I mean, they, everything is basically a buy game. Like there's no way to be competitive. Like no, that. there's, there's just no way if they merged, could they be, you know, a middling tier program? Maybe possibly. I mean, you never is know. That, is that conceivable at all? Or just that that's like, cause you're talking about two athletic departments that if you told them, Hey, you're going to cut your biggest expense in half and you've got a better chance of raising your revenue by doing this as well. What's the negative? I don't, I don't know that they would be willing to work together as two separate institutions, right? Yeah, no, it just like, definitely has to be a marriage between two athletic departments. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I think that's the only negative here. Um, but I just, I, I, I don't know how it would work. Because I, I really know. think those two, both those programs should drop back down. I mean, you asked, didn't they just get up to, to basically D1 yeah, a couple of years ago? Yeah, it, it was not, it, it was five, six, seven years ago. Yeah, I mean, it was like about, a, you know, yeah. within the last 10 years, but not yeah. last year, obviously. So, and UConn's uh, been around for a while. Uh, I mean, no, UConn's been, been around for a long yeah. time. So, they're, they're not the same as UMass. Um, it's just weird to me. We'll actually get back to the good teams. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, hey, Eric Cotton, by the way, said, what's up, guys? Haven't checked you guys out in a while. Dying for anything football. Um, We're excited for football, yes. man. Uh, Patrick said, Chris, hope you celebrated Italy coming back against the odds of beating England. So I, I know that you did. Uh, I did. And, I enjoyed that very much, my my my, my people. And yep. Jamal jumped in. He said, I think Clay gets fired this year because of the athletic director. I'm a big USC fan. Clay has lost the fan base. I think the issue is, does USC have those guys that are willing to pay the buyout and that are willing to pay whatever it takes to go get uh, somebody better? And And if you're looking for somebody better, who is that? Like Clay has yeah. kind of picked up the recruiting a little bit here lately, um, you know. I I don't know, I don't know what the what, expectation. What I, I would what I would suggest to a fan would be let's give him this year. Let's let's give yeah. him an honest shot at this year. Have your criticisms every game. Have your criticisms, but give him an honest shot because if he is improving, and the recruiting is getting there, which means next year you should be a little bit better than you are this year, and the year after that you should be a little bit better than you are there. If, but if you get the results that are bad, again, I do think it's a fireball offense. I do think it's time. I don't but what know are, what, what are his bad buyout results? would look like at the end of this year. Like what? What are the bad results? I mean, I do think USC being a you know seven and five team in that conference is pretty fireable. Looking at yeah. their schedule, you know they got they got a tough non con against you uh, Notre Dame. That's 
That's where it ends. Um, so you got a couple of pay for wins. You know, you still get a bunch of shitty teams in the Pac-12. Uh, I just I need to see what that buyout looks like, mainly because I'm just well. I regardless of the buyout, insane. like if it's an SEC team, like they are, we're firing done. them. Yeah, but I firing. think that's insane, though. Like that's where we're different. Is I think the way we do stuff in the SEC is insane. Agreed. Okay? Like I'm a fan of this this conference. I'm a fan of one of these teams. Firing coaches the year after you just signed an extension means you should have to fire everybody in the athletic department. I'm just, I'm just like, like I know now you're buying out more people, but, but that ha- every head has to roll at that point. Anybody yeah. whose signature signed off on giving the extension to somebody and then wanting to fire them the next year, all those people have to be fired. Not, not just yeah. one. I'm talking presidents. I'm talking everybody because we have to stop doing that. Hey, Jamal said, uh, but fellas, it's been over five years and he never beats good teams. I mean, I can't argue that. No, you know? you're, you're, you're right. So the question Gary was, was, was bringing up is something that we bring up all the time. Who, who are you going to go get? Okay? It's a, and it, is, the, it, is it James Franklin? Because if it's James Franklin, how much better is that? I was um, just about to say, are, are you, you know, sure the next guy you bring in is going to be better than what you got? I don't know that you can just go steal uh, a, a like great Matt coach Campbell? Do you th- I like, mean, do you think you can just go take one of the best coaches in college football from a smaller school? Yeah. I, I, there's, I, I don't know that there's a ton of people that want to move to California because of the tax rate and all that. Like, you'd have well, to pay... Or like extraordinary. I, I was I was numbers. just about to say you're talking about the the cost difference of a place like a state like Texas or Tennessee, where a the cost of living in Tennessee is a fraction of even Texas, much less California, and then there's no state income tax. Yeah, you you pay both of them five million dollars a year. Now 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 one guy's making two point five and the other one's making you know four point three. And Jamal said, so you don't think Matt would leave. Uh, I think he's uh, kind of shown. I don't know. I don't know like, the answer to that. Yeah, I, I don't know that I, he would leave this, for USC. There was a day and a time where USC would be able to put out the word and get anybody they want. I don't know that we live in that world anymore. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I there was a right. day and a time where every coach that's ever coached at Iowa State would leave for USC in a second, and they would they would do it for no money. You know, you don't have to buy their airfare; they'll pay it themselves. And and I I just don't know that we live in that world today. Well, no, everybody is making two plus million at, as a power five head coach. Well, so, but quality of life and quality of, of, of the way to live is there was I mean hell the the nineties and the early two thousands and the eighties California was the place you want it to be, yes. and now you have people packing their shit and leaving California in droves, which means it ain't so easy to talk middle America guys into moving to California. No, like it's a great right. place to vacation. Maybe you can spend a week there on the beach. So that's nice. But raising a family there, I don't know that a lot of people want to do that anymore. No, I think, I think you're right. I think you're hundred percent right. Thanks for listening to the winning cures, everything podcast. The website is winning cures, everything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at Gary WCE at Chris B G and any at winning cures, or you can email us Gary at winning cures, everything.com or Chris at winning cures, everything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.